Watch a cargo ship refuel at any major port, and you'll see something strange. Workers aren't pumping in regular diesel. They're filling massive tanks with a thick, black substance that looks like melted asphalt. It's so viscous that it has to be heated just to flow through the hoses. This isn't some experimental fuel or a temporary substitute. For over 150 years, the global shipping industry has deliberately chosen this tar-like substance to power the vessels that move 90% of world trade. And the reason isn't as simple as you might think. But what exactly is this mysterious black fuel? The black gold nobody talks about. The bunkering process at major ports reveals something the shipping industry rarely publicizes. Those thick hoses connecting bunker barges to massive cargo vessels are pumping something most people never think about. The fuel flowing into the ship's tanks isn't anything you'd recognize from your local gas station. This stuff is called heavy fuel oil, or HFO, and calling it asphalt-like isn't even an exaggeration. As ships move across every ocean on Earth, most of them are burning this thick, tarry substance that would solidify into a brick if it cooled down too much. It's so thick that it needs to be warmed to around 40 degrees Celsius just to flow. The shipping industry didn't pick this fuel by accident. When you're moving a 400 meter long vessel carrying thousands of containers across the Pacific Ocean, you need serious energy, and HFO delivers that energy in ways regular diesel simply can't match. But here's the question nobody asks at the refueling dock. Where does this black tar-like substance actually come from? The answer might surprise you, because it's not what the industry wants to advertise. Industrial waste that becomes ocean fuel. Here's where things get interesting. HFO isn't some specially designed marine fuel, it's actually the leftover crud from oil refineries. After they extract gasoline for your car, diesel for trucks, and jet fuel for planes, what remains at the bottom of the barrel is this thick, heavy residue. That's your heavy fuel oil. And here's the kicker. Because it's basically industrial waste, it's cheap. Massively cheap compared to regular diesel. For a cargo ship that can burn through 200 tons of fuel per day on a long voyage, that price difference is enormous. We're talking about saving millions of dollars on a single trans-Pacific crossing. But the real reason cargo ships take this asphalt-like substance over regular diesel goes deeper than just cost. HFO is incredibly energy dense. A single ton of this heavy fuel contains more usable energy than a ton of diesel. When you're powering engines the size of buildings and moving ships that weigh more than 200,000 tons, that energy density matters. A little HFO takes a ship a very long way. Those massive savings and energy benefits sound perfect for the shipping industry, but every fuel comes with a price tag that goes beyond the invoice and this one carries baggage that's been accumulating in our atmosphere for decades. The Hidden Cost of Cheap Power Here's what nobody wants to talk about. This asphalt-like fuel comes with serious baggage. Remember that HFO is the leftover residue from refining, which means it's packed with impurities. The biggest culprit is sulfur. Unlike the clean fuels refined for cars and trucks, HFO can contain massive amounts of sulfur that, when burned, transforms into sulfur oxide pollution. We're talking about a single large cargo ship emitting as much sulfur oxide as millions of cars. The shipping industry accounts for roughly 13% of the world's total sulfur oxide emissions. That pollution doesn't just disappear into the atmosphere. It creates acid rain, causes respiratory problems in coastal communities, and damages marine ecosystems. Coastal cities near major shipping lanes have been dealing with this invisible problem for decades. But sulfur isn't the only issue. When HFO burns incompletely in ship engines, it produces black carbon, those sooty particles that absorb sunlight and accelerate global warming. This black soot is especially devastating in polar regions, where it lands on ice and snow, darkening their surface and causing them to melt faster. After carbon dioxide, black carbon is estimated to have the greatest impact on climate warming. The shipping industry knew about these problems for years, but cheap fuel and thin profit margins kept those cargo ships burning tar. Then, in 2020, a single regulation changed everything and forced ports around the world to adapt. The Turning Point 
the International Maritime Organization dropped a regulation bomb called IMO 2020. Starting in January 2020, ships were suddenly limited to using fuel with no more than 0.5% sulfur content. That's a massive reduction from the 3.5% that was previously allowed. This single regulation shook the entire maritime industry. Suddenly, that cheap asphalt-like substance cargo ships had been using for over a century became a problem. Ship owners had three choices. Switch to low sulfur fuel blends, install expensive exhaust cleaning systems called scrubbers, or switch entirely to alternative fuels. The scrubber option seemed like a workaround. These systems essentially wash the exhaust gases to remove sulfur before it reaches the atmosphere. Sounds good, right? Here's the catch. That sulfur has to go somewhere. Scrubbers dump the contaminated wash water directly into the ocean. You're trading air pollution for ocean pollution and the environmental community is not happy about it. When regulations force an entire industry to change overnight, chaos follows. The scramble to comply with IMO 2020 revealed just how dependent global shipping had become on the single tar-like fuel, and the solutions that emerged brought their own set of problems. The price of progress. Here's what happened when IMO 2020 kicked in. Fuel manufacturers scrambled to create low-sulfur versions of HFO by either blending it with cleaner distillate fuels or removing sulfur during the refining process. These new fuels work, but they're more expensive. That price advantage HFO used to hold, it's shrinking. Meanwhile, ship owners who invested in scrubbers spending upwards of $5 million per vessel to install these systems are now facing scrutiny. Several ports have banned ships with scrubbers from operating in their waters. The technology that was supposed to be the solution is becoming controversial. And the real kicker is this. As more refineries shift toward producing cleaner fuels, the availability of traditional HFO is actually decreasing. The substance that powered global trade for 150 years is slowly becoming harder to find. Market forces and environmental regulations are converging to push the shipping industry toward a future where this asphalt-like fuel might not be the default choice anymore. The COVID-19 pandemic threw another wrench into everything. Fuel demand crashed, prices became volatile, and suddenly the economic advantages of different fuel types started shifting week by week. Ship owners found themselves in a complex situation where the rules kept changing. And while the industry struggled with these issues, a different problem was developing in the coldest and most remote parts of the world. What happens when this thick, tar-like fuel meets ice? The battle for polar waters. Here's something that'll surprise you. The Arctic and Antarctic regions have become battlegrounds over HFO use. Antarctica banned heavy fuel oil completely back in 2011. Ships entering Antarctic waters can't even carry HFO, let alone burn it. The Arctic is next on the chopping block. As polar ice melts and opens new shipping routes through the far north, pressure is mounting to ban this asphalt-like substance there too. The reason is twofold. Black carbon from burning HFO is literally melting the ice fast and if a ship were to spill HFO in Arctic waters, cleanup would be nearly impossible. In cold water, HFO becomes even more viscous and tar-like. It sinks rather than floats, sticking to everything it touches. The remote Arctic has virtually no spill response infrastructure. A major HFO spill there would be an environmental catastrophe with no good cleanup options. A ban on using and carrying HFO in Arctic waters is scheduled to take effect in July 2024. Though it comes with exemptions and waivers that weaken its impact, northern communities that depend on ships for food and supplies have raised concerns about increased costs if ships must use more expensive fuels for Arctic deliveries. Environmental concerns in polar regions, tightening regulations worldwide, and shrinking profit margins on traditional HFO. All these factors circle back to one fundamental question. Why did the shipping industry become so addicted to this black tar in the first place? The real reason revealed. For 150 years, the math was simple. HFO provided incredible energy density at rock-bottom prices. It's the leftover nobody else wanted, which made it perfect for an industry where fuel costs can make or break profitability. 
A massive container ship crossing from Shanghai to Los Angeles uses around 200 tons of fuel per day for roughly two weeks. That's 2,800 tons of fuel for one voyage. When HFO costs $400 per ton versus $600 for low-sulfur marine diesel, you're looking at savings of $560,000 on a single crossing. Multiply that across thousands of ships making millions of voyages, and you're talking about billions of dollars in cost savings industry-wide. That's the real reason. Pure economics backed by physics. More energy per ton, less cost per ton, and engines specifically designed to burn this heavy fuel. The entire shipping industry built itself around the cheapest, most energy-dense fuel available. But now that reason is being challenged by something bigger, the true cost of burning this stuff. The sulfur oxide pollution, the black carbon accelerates climate change, and the risk of environmental disaster from spills. Regulations are finally forcing the industry to account for costs that were previously externalized onto the environment and public health. Now that we've explained why ships chose this fuel, we still need to answer the bigger question looming over every port and shipyard today. What comes next when the old solution stops working? What's coming next? Right now, the shipping industry is at a crossroads. The International Maritime Organization has set a target to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from shipping to 50% of 2008 levels by 2050. That's an aggressive goal that HFO alone can't meet, even in low sulfur form. Ship designers and fuel manufacturers are exploring alternatives that seemed impossible just a decade ago. Liquefied natural gas is gaining traction as a marine fuel, despite requiring completely different storage and engine systems. Some ships are testing hydrogen fuel cells, others are experimenting with ammonia as a zero-carbon fuel, though it's toxic and difficult to handle. Battery power and wind assist technologies are returning after being abandoned for over a century. Modern cargo ships are being fitted with high-tech sails and rotor systems that can reduce fuel consumption by 10 to 30 percent. Solar panels are appearing on deck spaces. The industry is essentially rediscovering that ships can use multiple power sources in combination. The most realistic near-term scenario involves hybrid systems. Ships using a mix of fuels and technologies to reduce emissions while maintaining the economic viability of global shipping. But make no mistake, the era of simply pumping cheap asphalt-like fuel into ships and forgetting about it is ending. These future technologies sound promising, but they face a harsh reality. The world still has thousands of ships designed specifically for burning heavy fuel oil, and those vessels aren't disappearing anytime soon. Why this fuel won't die easily? Here's what most people miss about this whole situation. Heavy fuel oil isn't disappearing tomorrow. Ships have decades-long lifespans. Engines designed for HFO can't just switch to different fuels without major modifications. The entire bunkering infrastructure at ports worldwide is built around storing and pumping this thick, heated fuel. Scrubber-equipped ships will likely keep burning HFO as long as it remains economically viable and regulations allow it. But each new ship being built today has to consider whether designing for HFO makes sense for a vessel that will operate until 2050 or beyond. Increasingly, the answer is no. Fuel manufacturers are finding ways to produce low-sulfur versions of heavy fuel by blending or advanced refining, extending HFO's life in a modified form. But as refineries worldwide shift toward producing more light products and less heavy residue, the fundamental supply equation is changing. The waste product that powered global trade may simply become too scarce to remain the industry standard. The real story here is that cargo ships aren't choosing this asphalt-like substance anymore. They're being forced to choose something else. Market forces, environmental regulations, and technological innovation are all pushing in the same direction. What started as the cheapest, most practical option has become a liability that ship owners are actively trying to move away from. So that's the real reason cargo ships take this asphalt-like substance over regular diesel, raw economics met raw energy density, and for 150 years, nothing could beat it. But the game is changing fast. So what do you think the cargo ships of 2050 will run on? And should we have made this shift decades ago? Share your thoughts in the comments below.